And I don't usually refer to people by the title of, of doctor, but I want us to acknowledge Dr. Hickswell for all that he has, has done in showing that wherever you might begin is not necessarily an indication of your limits. He has done very well for us and he has maintained his good humor. My job is to, to highlight some of the developments that have taken place in the last 20 years in terms of the HRD programs and to not only give a brief retrospective, but to suggest ways in which we are preparing for the next 20 years. The program was, was launched in September 1995, and we started with just one item, which was the, the master's program in human resource development. In 1997, there was the launching out of the program of the HRD Alumni Association by members of cohort two of the MSC HRD. That would be the cohort that was incoming in 1997. So in the early years, we were operating with a two-year cycle. In 2000, September 2000, we had our first and only full-time cohorts of students admitted. And this offered an opportunity for persons in the Eastern Caribbean or the wider Caribbean to take time off and to come and do the program. The full-time program, however, was not sustained and we reverted back to our part-time format. In January 2006, having realized that research work in organizations and in HRD in the Caribbean and with Caribbean populations did not exist to a great extent, we launched in January 2006 the doctoral program in organizational behavior. Also in 2006, but in September 2006, there was the launch of the higher degree diploma in human resource development. In 2009, there was the official launch of the HRD Herald online in September 2013, a revamping of the MSC HRD program, the official launch of a revised MSC. And in January 2015, we launched the 20th anniversary commemoration activities. So that briefly is how we have developed. During that period though, we have graduated hundreds of students who have gone on to develop themselves further and who are now present in several major institutions in Jamaica and the region. The HRD programs are part of a self-funding unit. That is, we generate our own income and we pay our bills without any direct assistance from the university. 
For 20 years, we have maintained interest in our products, and we have been able to pay all our bills, even in these difficult economic times. So if there are any debtor, debtors out there, it is not because of us. <laughs> well, so we have maintained our economic viability for, for 20 years. We have done this, we've been able to do this because we have never had more than two full-time members of staff. And they have been extraordinarily committed, working together with a set of wonderfully committed part-time staff. So our formula has been a group of committed workers who have stayed with us essentially for the period of, of 20 years. From time to time, they mentioned that they should be better remunerated, but, none, but nonetheless, they continue. The program, from the beginning, selected as its basis a philosophy of development rather than a philosophy of management. This was done because it was felt that development got to the heart of the societal problems in a society such as ours. And a holistic developmental approach connected with fundamental transformational requirements. Organizational development linked to personal and societal development. We have provided our students with an interdisciplinary approach, linking and relating together the sociological, the psychological, and the social psychological. We have tried to demonstrate to our students how Caribbean history and social life demanded a psychosociocultural approach of relative interdisciplinary autonomy within a framework of behavioral science interaction and articulation. Here, we have followed CLR James' question on cricket. What do they know of cricket who only cricket know? Or if you like, what do they know of HRD, those who only HRD know? In this conference, we want to explore further our programs and the intellectual developments that are part of these programs. We want to connect our programs and the intellectual developments we have made to discussions and developments in a wider international context. And that is why Professor Keyes is here. He wasn't selected arbitrarily. He was selected precisely because we felt there was a connect between his work and ours, and we felt that we could enrich him and he could enrich us. Further, we want to demonstrate that we can continue to make a significant contribution to the development of our students, of the university, and of the Caribbean region. Thank you.